Yeah. Sure, here, everyone's here. Let's go. So we're trying to become conscious human beings. Excited? Yeah. It's okay. Here we go. Kol ikei chesaron shel nefilas ha'adam hu v'tishkach ed mecholelecha. All of our issues in life, all of our negativity, all of our hatred, all of our doubt, all of our low self-esteem, all of our arrogance, all of our issues in life are because we forgot Hashem. It's my wife. Because we forgot Hashem. If you were deeply God conscious, you wouldn't have all of these issues because you'd be like, well, this is great. Life's great. And on a more practical kind of level, it's really it's because we're not connected to our neshama. Your soul is very, very pure. And your soul's essence is simcha. Simcha means connected joy. And your soul's essence is love. So your soul is just love and joy. Love and joy, love and joy, that's all it is. But you're not connected to your soul because you're connected to your ego. You want people to like you and you want to have power and you want to be right. And you're connected to your physical desires and you don't want food and sex and money and... So your physical world and your emotional world and your mental world and your ego world is very lacking and damaged. So you, you, but you identify with it, so you keep needing stuff and therefore putting yourself down and putting other people down and causing pain. You cause lots of pain to yourself and other people. But your spiritual self is just love and joy and consciousness and connection. And that doesn't cause any pain to anyone. That's just like chill. So it's because we've forgotten who we are. You've forgotten who you really are. That you have all your issues. So we said you have your soul, you have your pure essence, and then you have your garments of your soul, your th the three layers called thought and speech and action. Thought, speech and action. Now for many, many people, even their action is negative. They're spending a lot of their time doing stuff that they shouldn't do, or not doing stuff that they should do. Then we have the speech world. Speech is less easy to control than action. But still, most people are not in control of their speech. You just blurt stuff out. You hurt people. Hey, Emma, how are you? That's so okay. All right. Teaching everyone. Great. So we're just talking about your soul, your neshama. Perfect, conscious, loving, and joyful. That's your essence. But then we have these three layers thought, speech, and action. And we just said that action should be easy to control. You should be able to do what you need to do. But for most people it's very difficult. They eat stuff that they know they shouldn't eat. And they watch stuff that they know they probably shouldn't watch. And they do stuff they know they shouldn't do. And they don't do stuff they should do. I should get up earlier, but you don't. I should call my mum more often, tell her how much I love her. But you don't. So, but those things you should be able to do, just do it. Speech, we just said, is hard to, to control, but you should be able to control that. But many people saying not nice things. Why would you ever say something not nice? Does anyone have a good reason? Positive criticism and feedback in order to help someone because you love them, that's okay. But why would you ever say something negative and derogatory to another person? Well, because they said that to me. Okay, but you can be bigger. You can be bigger. You don't have to put people down. What are you speaking about? What's your conversation? What do you talk about all day? You talk about meaningful things, loving things, or are you just talking about stuff? So speech, harder to control, but you should be able to control it. Thought, difficult to control your thoughts. Difficult to control your thoughts. And your thoughts are going all day non-stop. Now, what percentage of your thoughts would you say are uplifting and kind and sweet and positive and holy and healthy? So for most people, a very small percentage of their thoughts. So the whole system of life 
is completely controlled by your thinking. Because if you can sort out your thoughts, that will immediately sort out your speech, sort out your speech and your action. Your thought is the factory, it's the center of everything. So if you are thinking clearly and healthily and positively and lovingly, then you will be speaking that way. And you will be acting that way. So, you, yeah? How do you balance humor with putting other people down? Because it feels like when you want to be funny or you know, have a fun conversation, you often have to do it at something's expense, someone's expense. Why did the Scarecrow win the Nobel Prize? Because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. I didn't put anyone down. That was funny. Humor that puts other people down, well, you just got to ask yourself. Anything you say that makes other people laugh that put you down. Now, you'd be a good sport. You'd be like, yeah, got me. But you'd be hurt. You would be hurt. So we don't believe in humor that puts people down. There's lots of humor that doesn't put people down. So we don't find it funny. The reason we don't find it is because we say it's a very big klal, it's a very, very big rule in the Torah, that don't do to other people that you wouldn't want to have done to yourself. What you hate, don't do to others. So no one likes being the brunt of the humor. So don't do it. It's not funny. I'm trying to think of another joke. I got two jokes. No, I got two extremely hysterical, probably the funniest jokes ever that don't put anyone down, but my holy mouth can't say that. But they are very, very, very funny. They're very funny. Maybe I'll somehow I'll try and find a way to get you to hear them. But they're the funniest jokes ever, I think. Okay. So what we're training now is our thoughts. Now... You have three, you have five levels of your soul, our sages teach us. You have your nefesh, which is your enlivening force. It's just keeping your arms moving. That's your nefesh. Like animals have a nefesh. Anything alive has a nefesh. It's the enlivening force. Maybe chi in the Eastern wisdom is just survival life, life force. The difference between something that's dead and something alive is nefesh. When you die, what happened? Your nefesh, nefesh is gone. Nefesh is your kind of most physical, although it's not physical, but it's what connects your spiritual soul to your physical body, and it's the power pack. Then we have a level called ruach. Ruach means spirit. And in that level of ruach and spirit, it's really your emotions. Your emotions are going up and down, back and forth. Then we have a higher level called neshama. And your neshama is just your pure godly essence. Nefesh, ruach, neshama. And our sages in one system teach us that your nefesh is attached to your body, and your ruach is in your heart, your emotions, and your neshama is in your thoughts. Your neshama is called the intelligent soul. But if your thoughts are impure, then you're completely betraying your soul. Your thoughts are the ultimate way that your soul gets to express itself in this world. So, negative thoughts is a complete betrayal of your essence. Because, do you know what thoughts your soul has? Love and joy, love and joy, love and joy, connection, compassion. That's all you are. You're just one big ball of love and joy. Isn't that amazing? But how many people are walking around like that? How many people do you see are just bouncing around as a big ball of love and joy? Very few people. Why? Because you're, you're connecting to your ruach and your nefer, your love, connecting to your lower levels and your body and your actual physical body. You waited 20 minutes after the fast went out to eat yesterday, didn't you? Yeah? 10 minutes. 10? Okay. I like that. That's good. And then you just had a glass of water, a bit of fruit. Oh, it was a rug. You didn't hit a rug luck after a fast. You didn't hit, no one here ate cake after a fast. Who would fast and then eat cake? A ridiculous thing to do. Ridiculous. What would you eat? I had watermelon, actually. I had watermelon and then grapes. No pizza. No. Watermelon pizza. Okay. So, yeah, I, I don't... So, 
Once, you're, once you understand that it's your thoughts, is your power center, you realize that your whole life's work is your thoughts. Your whole life's work is just your thoughts. You sort your thoughts out, every other level of your being is okay. And then we said on, uh, on an even higher level is not only to purify your thoughts and direct them, but there is another level higher than the thought world called the spiritual world, where we then get into higher levels of your soul, like the Chaya and the Yechida, very high levels of your soul. But that's even beyond thought. That's where we clear our consciousness of thought and then we just experience. We just experience consciousness. And there we can touch Hashem, in that place. And for that you're going to need some breath meditation, which we do every Tuesday. When do we do our meditation? Tuesday we do our meditation sessions in the new building. You should come to them, because in that way you can feel your neshama. So all of our downfall in life is because we've forgotten spirituality. That's it. Spirituality is not just a nice little cool thing. Like, I'm spiritual. Can I have a yoga class on Monday morning? I'm spiritual. And I, I have a smudge stick, sage. <laughs> <laughs> That's not spiritual. That's cool, by the way. You should do that. I've got a smudge stick. It's very nice. But that doesn't make you spiritual. That makes you a hippie, which is fine. <laughs> and then so the, the opposite is also the case. Once you are such a slave to your physical and ego desires, it's very hard to work with your thoughts. Which, it doesn't matter which way you're going to work, and we're going to see, do you have to purify your body first and then raise up to your thoughts or the other way around? Either way, once you're in the control of ego and physical desire, very difficult. Life very, very difficult. You can't believe So, we realize that we can't be consistent. This is another thing that we've been saying a lot. You need to be consistent. Be consistent. No, some people are like, yeah, I'm flying and then they crash. Flying and crash. Flying and crash. We're not into flying and crashing. We're into consistent. Consistent moving. That's real spirituality. That's, that's a healthy human being. Now, if you need healing, then there's some, okay, I might need some psilocybin. But we don't want to be the microdosing, flying and crashing type people. Once you're a healthy human being, you don't need that anymore. It's called medicine for a reason, because you have it when you're sick. But when you're not sick, you don't need medicine anymore. You need consistent, you're just moving. You're moving. When you're in an aeroplane, when are you going faster? When you're taking off or when you're cruising? When are you going faster, take off or cruise? Cruise. 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 What feels faster? Take off feels faster, but you're not. It's not faster. Cruising is faster. So if when you when you need the, all these boosts, then it, you feel faster, but you're not really. You're faster when you're cruising. You want to be cruising, but cruising is a state of being. That's why many people are unhappy because they think happiness is the feeling I get when things go my way. But that's not happiness, that's I feel good when things go my way, and not when they don't. And I feel good when they do, and, not when, and I'm basically mediocre neutral, and then something goes my way, yay! And then I've had, That's not called happiness, happiness is a cruising. I'm cruising, and then something bad happens, I feel a bit bad, but I jump back very quickly to my cruising. I've got cruising <coughs> altitude. Sometimes I hit some turbulence. So, okay, I'm down, but then I'm back to my cruising altitude. So, we want you to be cruising here, and cruising comes from breathing and thinking healthily. And therefore, all of our work in life, beating your negative character traits, developing good character traits, having a good relationship with people, learning, growing, working, all of your avodah in the whole of life is all about strengthening thought. It's all about thought. To widen it, very important. Widen it. So there are two modes of being. One is called Meichin de Katnut, and one is called Meichin de Gadlut. 
very, very important concepts. Meichin de Katnut, or Katnut de Meichin, I've seen it written in both ways, is small mindedness. It's detailed, focused, and I can't see the bigger picture, I'm just step by step getting things done. And the truth is, you need that. You need that sometimes because you've got to get stuff down. You have to have a list. I love lists. I've got lists. This is what I need to do. I'm going to do my lists. And I get a tick note. So small-mindedness in this sense isn't actually a bad thing unless you get stuck in it. Meichen de Gadlis, or Gadlis de Meichen, is expanded awareness. See the bigger picture. Hold on. What's going on? Why am I doing all these little tasks? What is my life actually for? What is the work? And really, a very, very high level of Meichen de Gadlis is realizing that Olam Hazer this world in itself is just a training ground. And we get so caught up in this world and we're so upset and someone takes our parking space and I, it's like, okay, there's a bigger story going on here. Even in the terrible pain we're going through as the Jewish people at the moment, there's a Mochen de Gadlis means, okay, but there's a bigger story of the Jewish people. We've been through pain for 2,000 years and we become stronger and stronger and stronger. We're back in the land of Israel after 2,000 years. All of your relatives, all of your ancestors were begging at least three times a day for 2,000 years to come to Yerushalayim. Imagine you said to someone, what are we, 24? You said to someone, 100 years ago in Europe, don't worry, there's going to be a shiva next to the Kotel. There's going to be this British guy shouting at people to sort their lives out. <laughs> They'd be like, you're crazy. No way. It's a dream. It's a dream. It will never have it. I get it. 150 years ago in Poland, 500 years ago, no one would ever believe such a thing. And here we are. It's unbelievable. A resurgence, a renewal of the Jewish people. You would never have believed such a thing. So to get a higher perspective, when you're, when you're in the pogroms, to actually see, hold on, there's going to be a shatova. It's a much higher perspective. It doesn't take away from the pain, because yes, we have to feel the pain. So there's this constant flow of katnas, godless, katnas, godless. Smallness, focused, and wide perspective. Now also, you don't want to be ca caught up in making the godless either, because then you wouldn't achieve anything. You're, just, you're going to end up like one of those people in Sfat, and then just like, it's like, okay, but what are you doing? I just love God. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> but there are stuff that God wants you to do here. You've got to have this balance. Godless, it's a flow, we're always going in the flow. Rats over shav, it's called. Running and returning. Running and returning. Coming to Hashem, coming back. So you've got to be able to choose which one you're in. Most people are stuck in one of them. They're just stuck in Katniss. Or they're stuck in Godless. You have to be able to choose what's the appropriate perspective to have at what time. When I'm helping my son with his homework, I've got to be there. I gotta be, I can't be. Although, whilst I'm helping you with the homework, I've got to also zoom out and say, Binyamin, unbelievable. Mishnayas and brachas. What is a bracha? What is a shem? Binyamin, take a breath. Ah, let's get into Kadnas. Whenever you're learning Torah, especially Gomorrah, Mishnayas, Halacha, it can be very like details orientated. Don't forget what the details are for. What's the purpose of Halacha? What's the purpose of mitzvahs? Is so that you could have expanded God consciousness. That's the purpose of it. So you need the foundations in order to experience the, the wide view. <clears throat> and to tie your thought to God. But to tie your thought to God. So you're not distracted. So question, I think we do ask this every day. What percentage of your thought during the day is about God? How much are you thinking about Hashem during the day? I'm thinking about my Gomorrah. Okay, that's not Hashem though. No. I'm thinking about, you know, my future. Thinking about my relationships. Thinking about my health. What's for lunch. Thinking about stuff. Now, by the way, those are important things to think about. I'm not saying don't think about them. But thinking about Hashem should be a significant part of your day. So that is why we have Shachrit and Mincha and Mariv and Brachas. To try and make you remember that. That is why we have mezuzahs And we have lots of things as tools to help us remember. The whole of Judaism is just a, a mindfulness tool. That is what the Torah is. The Torah is giving us 613 mindfulness tools. 
But if we don't use them as such, then we're missing a point. You got to, that mezuzah, every time you walk past a mezuzah, you've got to wake up and be like, oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot, I forgot. I remember, I remember, remember, remember. Don't forget. But then it gets to the point where you don't have to be told to remember. Our first example we used is that girl you were obsessed with when you were 16. You didn't have to be told to remember her. Oh, uh, let's put up a sign saying, you're like, can't stop thinking, you're like obsessed. You've got to like, get forced to not, or you've got to punch her in the face to make you stop thinking about her. So there's, there's a higher level where you don't need to be reminded anymore, you just walk around, it's like, I am now tied to God. That's what I'm doing. Tie my consciousness to God consciousness. And once we're plugged in, to, tied to God, then our thought, speech and action will just start channeling. Well, I'm just going to flow. Love and joy. <laughs> love and joy. Just love and joy. Love and joy. That's all we're doing right here. Love and joy. So it's not just when we hear the shofar blowing on Rosh Hashanah and in Yom Kippur in the Ilo when you've got to be completely spiritually dead not to feel in the Ilo on Yom Kippur. We'll talk about that. We're coming up. We'll be there. He says it can't just be that we have these high spiritual moments. You know, I'm living a normal zombie mediocre life but then I have this high amazing that was a great third meal everyone was singing together in the dark it was so beautiful and it was so, and I had the I'm having these high spiritual moments but then in general I'm not once again we're not into the ups and downs into the turbulence we're into the I want to be cruising bakadusha. we want our thoughts to be consistently clear strong and tied to holiness. That's how you want to be thinking. Clear, strong, tied to holiness. And we said yesterday that one of the benefits of that is you just reject negativity at that point. It's, it's just, I just don't want it. Oh, it's just disgusting to me. There is a level where you really want to speak Lush and Hara, but you hold yourself back. Well, there's a level where you really want to speak Lush and Hara and you speak Lush and Hara, which is most people's level. Then there's a higher level where you want to say something bad, but you say, you know what, it's not okay to, so I'm going to hold my back, myself back. But then there's a level where it's like, I, it's disgusting. I don't, if you see a rotten apple on the floor with mold and worms, you don't have to hold yourself back from it. You're not like, oh, oh, okay, I really want to, but it's probably not good for me to eat that. You don't, you're disgusted, you're repulsed <laughs> by it. So once you're thinking in a clear, godly, pure, conscious way, you're repulsed by Lashon Hara. You're repulsed by saying bad things about people. It's just disgusting to me. You don't even, you don't even try. You think the Rashi Shiva is walking around trying to not speak Lashon Hara? It does, it's not even a thing. It's just like, and when he hears Lashon Hara, we, I wonder if you experienced this. After I was in Yeshiva for a year, I went home to England, and I hadn't heard a curse word for a year. Basically, we don't use curse words around here. Why, why would you? Your, his mouth is going to praise Hashem and uplift people. So I got home and one of my friends said, Whoa, how the have you been? And it was literally like I got stabbed. I was like, Oh God, what was that? Why? Because when you become holy and more spiritually sensitive, it's like so painful. But after two days in England, I was like, yeah, look. I didn't start saying it, but it wasn't so painful for me anymore, because that w you get pulled down again. It's like, okay, this is how people talk. But you want to be on that level where I just I can't, I can't hear that. It's just, ow, it hurts me, it hurts me. And that, we want that to be a consistent state of being, a consistent state of mind. So that's what we're going to be doing. The whole rest of the book is, really, let's train our minds to be tied to holiness. Unless you've got anything better to do with your life. You can tell jokes about other people. Any questions? Yeah. This is called B'nai Machshava Tova. Machshava Tova means good thoughts. Sons of good, children of good thoughts. They, I think there might be an English one. I don't know what it's called in English. By the Piazetz Rebbe, he was the Rebbe of the Warsaw Ghetto. Killed by the Nazis. In 1943, buried all his manuscripts, and they were found after the war. And 
Yeah. Can you be there in Come to my class every morning at 9.30. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. When you're out of here. Pardon? When, not, when someone leaves the yeshiva, how do you keep that consistency? At first, you're going to have to use these external things like mezuzahs and brachas. You're saying 100 brachas a day. So that's a pretty good thing. At first, you can't sustain the consistency, but you can come back as often as you can. But after a while, once you keep coming back, then you are going to start repeating phrases. You're going to walk around with basically a screensaver in your head of Yud and He and Vav and He and saying things like Yesh Bayre Eilam, there is a creator of the universe. Until you need to use your mind to do something. But if you aren't using your mind to do something, to speak to someone or give a class or do a task, then you shouldn't just let it happen, whatever's going to happen in your mind. You should then switch into screensaver, yudhe bave, and yesh bari But that takes some training. Yeah. I have some, yes. On YouTube. Living in tune, living in tune, dog bear Cohen. Subscribe, follow, like, share. Where is that? Chabin.